Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 21 of Direwolf20's server play series. I was just cooking up a Tesseract, and it's not here anymore. Where'd it go? There it went. All right, nice. Tesseract frame full. Oh, that's right. I need to, before I can actually craft this thing that I'm trying to make, I probably need some bronze. Let's see. Bronze ingot. Bronze ingot. Where is the bronze ingot that I can oh, craft? And I'm here with Fireball. What's going on, Fireball? Oh, hello. I'm just making things. User left your channel. That's cool. I am actually getting ready to start streaming. Nice. We'll be building a fireworks factory. Very cool. I'm making a exchanger. Oh, one of the uh, Thomic, or not Thomic, but um, Ender Tech uh, ones. It's currently uh, charging up via wireless charger, which I kind of think is the coolest thing ever. Oh, absolutely. You gotta love the wireless charger. Like, it's cool. It is, and it has a pretty decent range, too. Yeah, it does. And they, it's also, the exchanger is great for those who want to be able to do, like, the Thumbcraft stuff, like the uh, equal trade without having to go through Thumbcraft. Yeah. It's pretty expensive, like, technology-wise, but it's also very cool. Neat. So, I think I'm going to be working on more blood magic this episode. That's kind of the plan. Uh, I made a really cool system, which I'm going to explain to my audience right now. It's automatically making reinforced slates for me, which is nice. Uh, check this out. I added to the back of this thing a logic gate. All right, and I will be back in just a few minutes. Okay. So the logic gate says, if the tank contains less than 50% fluid in the altar, go ahead and emit a redstone signal, which then taps into this guy, and in the chest is a bunch of smooth stones. So I'll throw like another stack in there just for demonstration purposes, and I'll pull out uh, this. So we'll see that, uh, remember, this thing can hold up to 10,000 LP, right? So you'll notice that right now, it's not moving smooth stone from the transfer node into the tank. What it's gonna do is it's gonna wait until the tank is half full, and then it'll turn off the redstone signal and allow it in. And because it's uh, the hyper node, it's only gonna allow one item to go in at a time. Then this guy over here is set to extract blank slates. I also have one for reinforced and imbued slates. So there's imbued and I've got a bunch of reinforced. I basically left this on overnight and it worked great. I got about three stacks before my LP ran out. So that was cool. So we can see here this guy just tipped over the 5000 mark and it dropped a piece of smooth stone in there. Nice, right? Now the reason you want to do this is because if we were to put smooth stone in there and it was low on life points, um, it would be a bad thing because uh, you know, it would, it would start losing progress and it would just basically get stuck. So by doing this, we've pretty well effectively automated the altar. And you can see it's not going to have any problem. We're actually, because I've uh, used all the stuff to kind of get more uh, sacrifice runes, so we've significantly improved uh, what we've got going on upstairs with the whole automatic life point thing with all the sacrifice runes we placed on this thing, you'll see that we're definitely doing pretty well. So this episode, uh, I want to get started preparing for what we need to do for the invasion stuff. So I'm probably going to want to get some really good armor. <clears throat> and I'm probably also going to want to get a few other things. But in the meantime, I want to try out this radius thingy. So right now, radius is set to 3. So I think I have to remember how this is... There we go. It's insert and delete to increase your radius. So I can bump up the radius as high as 8. I'll keep it around three. That should be good. Haha, <laughs> sweet. That is cool. Love it. Of course, there's a little bit of tick rate lag going on on the server right now that I don't know that we've entirely figured out. Oh, here we go. We can demonstrate a much larger one here. So let's bump the radius up to eight. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. So that's why it looks like it's a little bit laggy in terms of doing its exchanging thing, but... Unfortunately, it's just, you know, what we have going on on the server. Nothing can be done about it. It's a little bit laggy. We're, we're trying to track down the source, of course, but that's how things go. Let's drop this appetite. We don't need that at the moment. Oh, that's cool. Well, that makes things look a little bit nicer, right? I 
like it. I definitely like the huge radius that you get from it. The only problem, of course, is when your inventory gets full, right? Sweet. All right, so what I'll be doing now is getting ready to... Um, I built this room over here with the specific intention of being kind of my alchemy room. So as we know, you need to do some alchemy stuff uh, with calcinators and all this craziness from Blood Magic that you guys have seen me play with in the past. We're going to need some of that to get the invasion system up and running. We're also going to want to get some decent armor so that we can be sure to hopefully survive the invasion system. Um, and I wouldn't mind maybe even having a better bow. Um, so, I mean, we've got a decent bow right now. My manual and arrows are not great. I could probably upgrade them pretty efficiently, but I need more quartz. And it looks like Soren has used all our quartz. So, I guess a trip to the nether is in store for me. Oh, you know what else I wanted to make? I wanted to make a blood lamp sigil. Yeah, this guy. Do we have any glowstone? We should... All right, yet another reason a trip to the nether is in order. We don't even have enough glowstone to make a blood lamp. All right, to the nether we go. I'm going to spend the next few minutes um, abusing this here resonant exchanger and get myself a bunch of glowstone and a bunch of nether quartz, and then we'll be back. Oh, there's another quartz right now. Go. Sweet. All right, we're back, guys. So I can make my sigil of the blood lamp now. Oh, I should also mention... Um, I think we've got uh, some other cool stuff I want to do here. I want to, oh yeah, that's right. Haha, -ha. that's what I want to do. I want to run around with the sigil of the blood lamp and light up this, um, everything in my, my blood magic room is going to be lit up with these sigil lights. So, no more torches. Gotta love that. That's actually really cool. I should use this thing more often. I knew it was neat, but I didn't know it was that neat. Let's see, how's F7 treating me? Pretty good. There we go. So, I mean, yeah, it has these little, like, red particle effects going on, but that's fine. I'm okay with that. Oh, that's neat. I think we can even put them on the ceiling if we want. Yeah. Nice. All right. So uh, there you go. No more torches. See you later, torches. I don't need you anymore. I actually don't know how I missed that, but okay. All right. So we've got uh, blood magic lit up. We've got to make ourselves the stuff we need to get everything going again. How's this process doing? Uh, it's going well, but the only downside is, and I'm going to get my sigil of divination doohickey. Uh, yeah, we're not fast enough for direwolf. So I want to speed things up a little bit. Let's get ourselves a few speed runes. I hopefully have what I need here. Um, I'm going to get about a dozen of them. So I should have more blood runes because it uses blood runes, and luckily I've, uh, you know, picked up a lot of them. Because I replaced them all with uh, sacrifice runes. Cool. So let's do this. This might be a cool idea. Let's see. Ah, nice. That'll speed things up. Oh, look, he did it over here, too. Okay, I guess I'll accept that. All right, so that should rapidly increase the production of stuff over here. So our flying slate should be running faster. I just want to make sure, see if we are um, producing more LP than we're using. That means we're kind of wasting LP, basically. So if we're using more than we're producing, then that's good. So I want to find a nice balance here. So let's actually swap out a couple more blood runes. Get some speed and sacrifice going here, and let's see if that is a good place to be. Yeah, it's probably good. We'll leave that as is, and hopefully we'll kind of have a good balance between the speed at which we're producing um, more blank slates and etc. 
So I'll leave this in here for now. This will kind of just be this. Let's start producing some alchemy stuff. So we're going to need uh, an alchemy station for blood magic. So let's get one. Alchemic chemistry set. Just needs a brewing stand. Should not have any problem with laser rods, right? And this guy right here gets us what we need. Nice. All right, so clearly what I need next is a bit more obsidian. So setting up a quick igneous extruder. There's an aqueous accumulator under it. This should give us a bunch of lava going inside here. And ta-da, obsidian production, nice and easy. All right, guys, we're back. Time to make a nifty chemistry set thing. So let's figure out how we want to do what we want to do. So we're probably going to want to place our master ritual stones somewhere in here. Let's see, where are we going to want to do this at? I'm thinking, hmm. You know what, I'm going to put it right in the center of the room, I think. Ought to be a good spot. And here goes nothing. There we go. So the centerpiece of this room will obviously be the Ballad of Alchemy. And we're going to have the Alchemic Chemistry set in the front. And then we need three chests. I should probably get... You know what I'm going to do is probably run a access point over this area. Because I keep running back and forth and that's just going to become annoying very fast. Do I have any cable laying around? Soren will yell at me for messing with his system. Really? He only has three covered cable and uh, I hate... All right, never mind. We'll do that later off camera. What I'm going to do is just get my chests. And set them up like so. There we go. And now I just need an altar, and we'll be in good shape. That's step one. All right, guys, you've seen a lot of the uh, alchemy stuff in the past from Blood Magic, so I'm not going to do a lot of it on camera. Also, I need a lot of stuff, so I'm going to try and do a lot of this off camera for the most part. I think the first thing I'm going to do, though, is get myself um, the required reagents. So uh, the main thing I'm just going to set up here real quick is this. And I might as well throw a blood orb in there. That should start cooking up. Looking good. And then I can take the simple catalyst, put it in here, and then all I need to do is uh, activate the ritual. So I think I can do that from underneath here, probably. Where's my activation crystal? There we go. Awesome. All right. Now it should be uh, creating uh, all the simple catalysts. I'm just a little bit low on sugar, so I'm going to see about maybe borrowing. Hey, Fireball. Hey, Thider. Can I borrow a cup of sugar? You sure can. And by cup, I mean about two stacks. Oh, sure. Okay, cool. I have a sugar cane farm that's all automatic, so that's no problem. Nice. What are you making that needs sugar? Simple catalysts. Uh, I thought you were making me a cake. I could make you a cake if you want. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I took four stacks. Okay. That's right. It'll automatically ones. replenish. It automatically turns on and replenishes itself. Nice. I'm going to be doing the... Um, the the giant invasion from blood magic at some point relatively soon Ooh, when you do that i'd love to see it yeah uh it looks really cool so i'm expecting large amounts of fun to happen i'm expecting death probably um that's yeah i i, I would say that's very likely yeah absolutely a pretty high chance of death but fun death yeah. So, I mean, fun. got that going for us. Are you already up ready for a tier 6 altar? Uh, I am not, but I'm preparing for it. So it'll probably still be an episode or two before I can get to that point. I also want to get some, like, good armor. I might get some blood armor and all that good stuff. But what I'm doing right now is um, I, I want to get a tier 5 altar soon. and then uh, But I'm just preparing because there's a lot of reagents you need ahead of time. Okay. Yeah, you need um, 16 
of um, each of the following. Aether, Terre, Incendium, Aquasalis, Sanctus, Tenebrae, Magicalis, and Potentia. Cool. So, something of a long list of things that you need to have ahead of time. Neat. Yeah, that looked like and... it's pretty complex from what um, yeah. uh, x was saying. Oh, it's really complex looking, yeah. That's definitely no doubt. All right, so now that we've got that going, I think because I want to do that off camera for the most part, what I'm going to build now on camera is something to automate the creation of slates. I think that might be cool. All right, we'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, here's what we're going to do. Uh, I want to automate this thing pretty much as well as I can. Uh, looks like, yeah, I should have my simple catalysts here, and I have a Steve's factory manager, and we get to do this a little bit more efficiently than we have in the past, which is awesome. So let's first use uh, advanced cable clusters with transforming cable camouflage installed, and we're just going to set up a quick trigger with a camouflage updater that will say both these blocks, and we're going to update their bounds. We're going to set their collision to zero. And inside, sides, camouflage. Yeah, let's do that and see what happens. Ta da! Haha, <laughs> gotta love it. And I can access the chest. Perfect. But we should be able to access, uh, because of their advanced cable clusters, that means that they work as cables, so we should have access to the blood altar. Nice. That's cool, that's what I want, perfect. So let's do the following. This chest is gonna keep one of each ingredient that I want. This chest is gonna keep all the rest. And all I have to do is uh, check for the appropriate stuff. So let's create a quick command group. And inside this group, we're going to have two nodes, an input and an output. And what we're going to say is, we're going to say, create a condition that says if in the iron chest on any side there exists simple catalyst times 64 if that's true and then if that's false So if there's not 64 simple catalysts inside the iron chest, okay, iron chest, 64 simple catalysts, then what we want to do is say, grab from the wooden chest a simple catalyst. We can even specify just one. An output to the blood altar. I guess on the upside, we'll see if that has to be changed. A simple catalyst, and we'll even specify just one, okay? So if there is um, less than 64, we put one simple catalyst inside the blood altar from the wooden chest. Cool, seems pretty straightforward so far. And if there are 64, then we want to grab from the blood altar on the top, activate, Whitelist, simple catalysts, okay? And we're going to output that into the wooden chest on the north side, and we can leave this as an empty blacklist, cool? And then from here, we'll do a flow control because regardless of which path we follow, we want to eventually make our way to the output uh, node here, okay? So we'll connect all this stuff up, and then we'll hit our trigger. And what that should do is it should insert a simple catalyst into the blood altar here. Nice, and this thing should start cooking. And we're getting simple catalysts. Let's wait until we get about a stack. All right guys, we've gotten to the point where we have 64 simple catalysts, and if you were watching, it just happened. The uh, simple catalyst got pulled out of the blood altar. Now, if at any point we have less than 64, a new simple catalyst from the wooden chest would go into the blood altar. It will get created in the alchemic chemistry set, and then uh, once it's done being created, it will uh, go ahead and pull the item out of the blood altar. You can see there, this thing remains empty. So some changes to the way the uh, alchemic chemistry set works is what made this possible. If you remember from the last time I set up something like this, we had to do a lot more effort because um, it was basically filling all the slots with all the available items. Way of Time actually changed that uh, kind of at my request 
to make it so that it only puts one set of items in at a time. It makes it easier to automate. Um, and he also made it so that uh, when it's empty, I think, or if a different item goes in there, it'll automatically clear and fill up. So definitely easier to automate uh, this ritual now. All I have to do is add some other stuff. So for example, if I wanted some strengthened catalysts, it shouldn't be too hard to add. So all I'm gonna need is some bone meal and some nether wart. Oh, luckily I have that pretty well in hand. Let's get some made. Uh, I should have some nether wart back here in my mob spawn area. Dun, 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 dun. One stack of nether wart, please. And then we'll head over here and get some bone meal if we've got it. If not, I know another place I can snag it from. Bone meal. Alright, I just want one stack's worth, well, yeah, one stack for now, we can always add more to it later, um, shouldn't be too big a deal, so we'll throw this in here, and I'm going to uh, pretty much set up the exact same grouping configuration that we had a minute ago, so I'm going to do that off camera and come right back. All right, guys, we're back. So I should have just automated this. Um, so I'm making myself some strengthened catalysts. And the way I set it up is very much the exact same thing, only the condition I'm looking for for strengthened catalyst is 16 instead of 64. I figured that would be a good approach to go with. All I need to do now is make sure that we have at least one strengthened catalyst in the wooden chest. I'll put this one in here, and then we just connect the nodes. And what we should wind up with is a strengthened catalyst going into the blood altar, and uh, this guy going ahead and pulling from here. Oh yeah, there's only one more problem. Um, I need to get the simple catalysts into the side here. Hmm. So maybe I need to add some more cabling underneath there. That might not be a terrible idea. Let me go get some more cables and try and keep I'll say half a stack or something like that at all times. So let's do that. We'll grab some cables. We should have some in here somewhere. You know what? Let's do factory manager. That's usually the easiest way to track down inventory cables. Six of these guys. And we should have everything else ready. And this I can luckily run under the floor for the most part, so I don't need to worry about hiding them. So we'll just run this underneath here like so. There we go, nice and well hidden. I'll make that smooth stone in a minute. So then all we need to do is um, just shuffle things around a little bit. So we're going to do a separate line of triggers and we're going to say input output, and this should be a real easy one to do. We're just gonna say the inventory will be the iron chest, that's one block away, will be the input. Doesn't matter north side. We'll do an empty blacklist, which means we can pull anything out of there. And then our output destination will be the wooden chest that's, you know, five cables away. So that's the further away wooden chest. And the target will be the north side. And this will be a white list of catalysts. So we'll say simple catalyst. We want to specify that we should keep 16 in there. And it doesn't really matter how much you go for, right? And then we can uh, hit X to go back. And we'll also specify... Uh, strengthened catalysts, we'll say 16 of those as well. Cool. So then when we hook this up, what we should see is um, 16 simple catalysts and some strengthened catalysts as well. Now we can use those in the um, you know outcome and chemistry set. The only other problem that we might run into is if we run out of simple catalysts and we need to make more. Um, so one other thing I'm going to set up is a final trigger that will say um, input output I'm just going to tell it to every one minute, so every 60 seconds, stop whatever you're doing. Because let's say that we ran out of simple catalysts for some reason, and we were sitting there waiting for more simple catalysts in order to make strengthened catalysts. Well, the system would just get stuck, right? Like it would never stop making strengthened catalysts. It would just keep waiting for more simples, and simples are not automatically being created, which is a problem. So we're going to tell it every minute, just go ahead and reset the system. We're going to say input will be the top of the blood altar. So blood altar, target up, activate, and... Uh, it can pull anything out of the top of the altar, and the output will be the wooden chest that's one cable away. And the target will be the north side of the chest and also an empty blacklist. So that way, 
every 60 seconds or every one minute, or I could even make it every, you know, 120 seconds. There we go, that should be good. So, you know, that way it'll just reset the system. You can see here, it just did it because I was changing it, right? We didn't get the strength and catalysts we needed, um, but it did go ahead and, um, you know, pull out uh, the, this guy, the simple catalyst, to make more simple catalysts before we proceed with more strength and catalyst. So that way we'll just keep um, the lower tier ingredients, the simple and strength and catalyst that we need, um, ready at all times, right? Like we'll make sure we have enough. Cool. All right, guys, there's one more thing I want to show you uh, before we proceed here, and that's going to be, is this what I need? How do I get potential again? Quartz. Ah, that's right, quartz. Okay. So we'll just throw that in there. I knew I had it. I just forgot what it was. Cool. So Potentia is pretty useful with the Ballad of Alchemy, and I'm going to show you why. So the first Potentia I get, I want to go ahead and toss in here, and I've already created the uh, process for Potentia. So it's the same exact setup once again, but this time just looking for the right amount of Potentia. The reason I wanted to get this, and it's pretty cool, is the following. Let's get ourselves a real quick setup before we wrap up the episode here. I want to get everything that we're going to need um, for the following. Let's do this. All right, guys, let's craft something pretty useful real fast. Uh, first, I made fractured bones, which are four bones and gunpowder. Uh, these guys are going to go into here with this, I believe, right? Uh, and a gold nugget. I believe, right? No, wait. Uh, these guys go in here with a strength and catalyst. And what am I doing wrong here? Concentrated catalyst. Strengthened, fractured bone, gold nugget. Strengthen, gold nugget, fractured bone. Maybe I need a stronger blood orb. Yeah, that was it. Better blood orb, that's all I needed. All right, so uh, looks like it's on my to-do list to get a better blood orb, but that's fine. All right, so that should get me concentrated catalyst, which I then add to some imbued slates. And I wanna get myself the alchemic calcinator. So I'm gonna need another strength and catalyst and a bit of crafting here in just a minute. There we go. And the reason I'm showing you this, trust me, it's very useful to know. So let's get ourselves the calcinator. So the strength and catalyst goes in the middle, the cracked rune plates go there. And we're going to start, oh, you know what I should do while I'm here is um, get the, the items I need to route. Uh, so let's see. Let's craft these real quick. Hopefully they're not too hard. Where are they? Dun, 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 dun. Nope, this one. Yeah, alchemic router. So we're going to need another strength and catalyst and some quartz rods. Okay. And the segmenter is also going to need a strength and catalyst. So let's get two more of those, and I'll be back when I craft these. All right, let's see if I can pull this off. So magician's blood orb goes in here with the potentia. It should start cooking and turn itself into what we want it to turn into. Cooking up, cooking up. I thought that, there we go, potentia mount. Nice, 1,000, beautiful. Throw another bit of potentia in there. So liquid potentia has a very nice effect with uh, the blood altar on top of the Ballad of Alchemy. When we bind these, which hopefully I can do with this, let's see, I don't know if I need the bell jar or not, but we'll find out in a minute. Let's go into bat mode for this. It should make things a little bit easier. Oh, that's right. I made this a little bit hard on myself. Let's see, we're probably gonna wanna do it from this side. So, can we find the Master Ritual Stone? Nice, we can see it through the that thing. So that should be cool. I should be able to do this. So let's try it. I'm gonna do the do the alchemic segmenter. So we're gonna do this. Shift click. Tank segmenter now set to potentia. Tank now has one tank set to potentia, and we're going to route potentia to right click here, linking to select a container to here. Nice, look at that. So if we check, we should see um, 1,000 potentia inside the Master Ritual Stone, and we have a remaining 1,000 inside here. Cool. Uh, I should be able to right click these or something to clear their binding. I don't know how this works. 
I always get confused. Anyway, this should speed up the alchemical process by five times. So let's see where we at right now with simple catalyst. We've got close to a stack. So if we hook these triggers back up, we should see this thing running much faster now. Boom, it already finished and it's working on uh, the next set of catalysts. Wow, that is a lot, lot faster uh, than it was a minute ago. Look at that, it's cruising. Boom, done. And another set, there we go, done now. That is fast. So when I said it was really useful to hook up the Potentia stuff here, I wasn't kidding. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll let this thing go. I'm gonna go grab a hopper real quick. He should auto craft Potentia for me. I believe he's set to do that. So uh, let's get a hopper here. And we've now pretty much fully automated this thing. All we have to do is decide which kinds we want and add a new command group here the same exact way. I better hook up the nodes for Potentia. Uh, so he's probably now refilling his internal supply of simple catalysts pretty quickly, by the way. You can see we're at 55, we're at 56, and we're at 57. So really quick to get all that done. How's my uh, LP doing? Not too shabby. And I'm just going to throw the hopper on here and get ready to tell you guys that it's unfortunately wrapping up point for the episode time. So for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed checking out this episode. I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, I'm really happy with how efficiently we're auto producing the reagents that we need. Oh, look, we're getting some potentia. Nice. That's what I wanted to see. So we'll let this continue along. Uh, you can see that we're slowly but surely moving the strength and catalysts. Um, by the way, I added one more step here that I didn't show you on camera. I set it up. Remember when um, we pulled items out of this thing and they landed in here? Um, it was because we swapped something out at some point and they landed in here. I added this um, output thing here that says um, grab. Uh, we're still pulling from the iron chest and we're inserting into the wooden chest that's far away, but we're just blacklisting catalysts and strength and catalysts. This will move everything that's not a catalyst or strengthened catalyst into this inventory, which is probably not too good of an idea right now. Uh, so that was a bit of a derp on my part. Am I out of LP again? Oh, wow, that was fast. I burned through that very quickly. All right, better wrap up the episode. We'll come back next time. Hope you enjoyed it. Direwolf20 signing off. Take it easy.